Richard. So I have so, I have so many questions. I don't even almost know where to start, but I do. So I watched the screener today. Okay. There was a lot going on. Richard, there was a lot going on. First, I had questions for my own personal single list. Then I saw the mask that was knitted, then your two grown children at home, and then your church. And after knowing that you've worked with people like Mariah Carey and Mary J. Blige and Celine Dion, like legends, mm -hmm. I was like, what's happening at this church of his? Well, so, let's start with your background. Okay. So tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. How would you describe Richard Hartley? Well, I'm an artist, you know, I'm an artist. I've been told, I don't, I don't agree with this, Linda, but I've been told that I'm eccentric, that I'm out of the box and over the top. I don't know where the top is, so I don't know what they're talking about, but I'm just authentically myself. I'm passionate. Why are you laughing? I'm I, want, passionate. I didn't want to interrupt, but like Richard, right. when I watched, I had to watch two times if I have to be honest here, because you came out the gate over the top. You were, I, I was like, where am I looking? You have a, like a boisterous personality. You're, you have a fashion sense. You have like a lot going on. And I wanted to get all of it for this interview, but I didn't even know where to start. <laughs> well, let's start at the beginning. I grew up in church. I'm just a church kid. And I grew up in church, singing in a church, maybe five, six years old, you know? Then I started teaching the voices. I could hear all the parts. So I was teaching the church choirs how to sing. My mother was in my choir. I had to put her out because my mother was off note. And I was like seven. And she was like, <laughs> you will not be telling me how to sing your seven. And I was like, but ma, that's the wrong note. And so she quit the choir. And so I did that for like all of my teen years to about 20, 25. And then I was able to sing in the off-Broadway musical, Mom, I Want to Sing. And I became the choir director for that show and the reverend, and then the church I grew up in, they kicked me out of the church because I was singing on Broadway. Oh, scandal. Too much. Scandal. They said, this is not green leaf, this is red leaf. They said <laughs> that was, <laughs> they said it was too much and I was over the top. Well, I sang with the Broadway show and we went to Europe and Japan and Africa and met all these people. And I started training choirs in, in Europe Paris, Italy, Germany, Japan. I've been to Japan about 150 times, you know? And then people would refer me to put together choirs for big name celebrities, like uh, uh, Mariah Carey and with Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross and doing big, big late night shows at David Letterman show and Oprah and all of those different things. And that's what I've been doing as well as being a New York City guidance counselor for 25 years in the elementary school system. Busy plate, that's a busy plate. Now, let me ask you this. So what I saw from the show is that your mom started the church that you now run. Yeah, that's my true. mother had this dream, it's not my dream. She decided God called her to start a church. So she calls me. I'm like, my God didn't speak to me. He spoke to you. So she drags me in the church with her. Five years in, she says, we have a guest preacher. I said, oh, great. Who is it? She says, you. So she makes me the pastor and she sits back and watches it. But then she may, she may have known that it was your calling because at some point. Nobody called me. I didn't, get that call. I didn't get that call, Linda. It was on mute. Richard, you got the call. You got the call because you've been a pastor for many, many, many years now. So at some point you had to have said, hello, yes, I'm here and I'm ready. All right, here we are. Yes, yeah, so I've been pastoring for 20 years now. Yeah. Okay, so is it hard for you to be in one place now, now that you're in charge of your own church and you're trying to develop the talent to a international level? Knowing yeah. that, you know, you have some home, should we call them homegrown, open-hearted talent? Is local, that accurate? Local yokels. Local yokels. Don't tell them I said that. I definitely will not tell them. 
it's very hard because I'm used to traveling. I'm used to being in the UK for a couple of weeks. Then I'm in Germany. I come home for a month, pretend like I like my children. And then I leave again. And then I come back to the church and I leave again. But I've been here for like about a year. I am, I'm, it's killing me. And, and in the middle of a pandemic. So you're, you're home even more so. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about uh, Judea and Jordan. So I saw from the show, Judea is very smart, couple of master's degrees under her belt. And uh, Jordan will say has some musical gifts. Jordan is, is, a, is a musical protege. He's been playing the drums since he was like three. And so he's a self-taught musician. He's traveled with me to Africa and to China and to Japan and all over the world. So he's, he's doing his own musical career. Problem is it starts at four o'clock in the morning. That's when this concert starts. And he's the only one at this show. Now, Judea collects oh, college degrees and she frames the college degrees. Linda, let me tell you my struggle. She frames the college degrees and she just looks at them. So she has a bachelor's in political science, a master's in public relations, a master's in journalism. She just applied for a PhD from Columbia, but she has no money and no job. So that's what this is. So I'm a little curious because I think they may be around the same age as me. And so I'm wondering, like, how are, how are you all at home still? How did that happen? Because my wife runs a hotel. This is the Hartley Hotel. She cleans for them. She cooks for them because she can't cook for me. Mm -mm. She cooks for them. She does their laundry. She, she takes out the garbage. I really married a pretty plumber. She's like a plumber. <laughs> She does all the work. She does the, she, I'm going to throw out the garbage. She does that for them. So how, what advice would you give as a father for, you know, the millennials? What advice would you give for them to be independent and survive in this world? It's time to go. It's time to go. I say in the show, she says, I want to stay here. I want them to stay here to grow. I say, you want them to grow. I want them to go. It's time to go and establish your own path. I don't care what the path is, as long as it leads out my front door. I don't care. <laughs> be a tree pruner. Just be a good one. I don't care. You can't be a, a tree pruner with two master degrees. Yes, yes. yes, yes, yes I don't care. How much is the check? How much do the pruners make? <laughs> you can own the company, perhaps. Well, get started, you know. And she, she's not in the dating field. I told somebody the other day, the only date she has is a court date with traffic tickets. She doesn't have any dates, you well, know. Well, dating is hard, Richard. Like, I wanted to talk to you about that, actually. Dating is very hard for our generation. And no, I'm not your world. friend. Like, I am I not totally your friend. Related. I relate no. she talked about Bumble and Tinder and Hinge and all of that. Because we're I'm all... I'm not your friend, Linda. You are sympathizing with this for foolishness that's going on in my house. Well, because I listened to your advice and it didn't really make sense. I thought you were <laughs> come with some wisdom. How did my advice I had my pen ready. Here's what you do. Okay, you, what do you do? You have to go and mingle. Where? Wherever you can. Now, because of COVID, of course, we have to mingle on Zoom. But I'm like, Judea, before there was Zoom, she wasn't Zooming anywhere. You have to go out and be seen. Okay, you got but when go. we're out and seen, then what? What? And then, you know, I have to teach her the art of flirting. You know, you can't go on a date and the first thing you say is, what's your credit score? And you can't do that. Okay, so walk, walk me through, because, you know, I'm in the single life, too. So let me get some knowledge from you. Okay. I Where do I meet the person? So... This is pretend COVID's not existing right now. I'm mm -hmm. out. I went to the market. Did I go to church? Like where, where am I meeting these people? Okay, now it depends on what type of person you want to find. Okay, and well. If you want to find a high powered individual, you have to go to high powered places. Uh, that may not be the library where Judea goes. Okay. So you have to match the person with the place. Come on, Linda. I'm giving you, this is the good advice. I'm helping you here. <laughs> you know, if you if you want someone in a higher income bracket, you know, you might not want to choose Dunkin' Donuts for your coffee break. Okay. So I go to the high power place. And you got to wear high power, you got to wear high power clothing. Okay. 
You know, you look like you have it together. I'm looking at all the action. I yes, see. No, I do, but I still haven't found the one. Well, I don't know where you've been. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> we, we have to do some off-screen tutorials. I'm gonna have to do something. Off-screen tutorials. I love it. I love it. Okay, so let's talk about your church, your choir. I want to talk about your wife. I want to talk about Dodie, all of it. So what are you trying to do on the show? Are you trying to get your choir together? Trying to get the choir on par with my experience. You know, I haven't worked with them in years on a regular basis traveling. So the choir has basically fallen apart. We used to have a concert choir, maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago when I was home a little bit more, mm -hmm. but now they've fallen apart. So that's one of my missions. The second mission is to get my son to have his own music career, not in the basement. Okay. We're not doing as the basement turns. We have to come out of the basement and get overseas. See, he's coming out the basement now. Jordan, I hear him. He's like a house ghost. Tell him to come on. Oh, is that's Judea. Judea. Judea, if people want to see you. This Linda friend of mine is defending you. She says she's part of your generation. It's hard to date. I say not so. See, watch this, Linda. Come on, watch. Come on. Look, yeah, look what she has in her hand. You can't, look, you can't see her. They can't see you. Hi, Miss Linda. Look, Hi, Judea. Judea and a laptop, and she's studying something. <laughs> That's me. Look, I same thing. Computer exactly. ahead of me. I hear you. Yes. I'm trying to reason with your dad, Judea. Tell him. I'm, with him. I'm, I'm trying to help her find a, a husband. Yeah, oh it's not working. <laughs> because she's in Facebook. She has her face in the wrong book. She's always in Facebook, and she's always studying and you know trying to get another degree. She's trying to get the whole alphabet behind her name. <laughs> See, she's off to do that. That's great because she's always bettering herself. So that is important. So that when she goes to these high power places, Richard, she yeah. not only looks good, but she speaks the speak and she walks the walk the whole nine yards. She, she sounds like the full package. I need her to pay the rent. But she's in school. She's been in school for the last 30 years of her life. <laughs> Please. Please, please. And so that's one of our things we're trying to do. I'm trying to talk my wife into helping me make these children a little bit more independent. Mm -hmm. Then I'm dealing with my own imbalance. You know, I don't know if I'm a reverend or I'm a rock star. I switch from days from, I want to be different things because I'm many different things. But so, what is your calling though? Because I know you're grown. So you know what your calling is. My calling is, I'm a servant to the world. Oh. Did you hear the music? <laughs> and so by serving the world, are you serving them through your own music? music? Or are you serving them through the word? Through the word, through music, and lately dating advice. Well, you know, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to hold you to that. If I'm single by the end of this year, I'm going to go ahead and do this little Zoom thing again. But if you use my format, I bet you, you won't be. Okay, well, I'm going to put it to the test. I'm going to give it this entire year, and mm -hmm. I'll get back to you. But I'll, no, I have to check in with you periodically to make sure you're following the right things. Oh, so if I veer off a little bit, then that's not going to work? You're, you're going to get an alert from me. It's going to be, Linda, get out of Dunkin' Donuts. We talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going to happen. I want to talk to you a little bit about filming during the pandemic mm -hmm. and what that was like for you. And uh, I want to know why Stacy knit you a mask and thought that that was okay. Well, filming during the pandemic was a challenge. You know, we had to follow regulations. We had to have safe, we had to have safety, you know, we had to follow other precautions. So we had to rewrite some things because we couldn't venture out into big public spaces at when we perform, it's usually a couple of hundred people there, so we couldn't promote those concerts, you know, like that. So we had to be creative. And so in some of the scenes, we're doing choir rehearsal, but of course, now you have social distancing or family clusters, and you have to have precautions. So my wife loves to knit. She knits everything. She knits, you know, cup holders, and she knits diapers if she could. She knits pot holders. If you're standing still, she knitted a whole dress. 
I'm like, she knitted a whole dress. And I was like, where are you went into the supermarket? Clean up on aisle seven. I'm like, Stacey, roll around and stop. <laughs> roll around and get the spill water. So she knits everything. So she decides she is going to knit a mask for me for rehearsal. Now, Linda, this mask is about a half a foot thick. Ooh. It looked like made up burlap. I'm like, you're going to kill me. It's an ugly, I don't know what color it was. It just looked like destitute. It was beige, beige or something. And you know, I'm colorful. So I got this big, thick mask on. I don't know if she was keeping germs out or keeping them in. I don't know what she was doing. But she was serious about that. She went all in on that mask. I love it. I love it. So your church is located in Queens, New York. Yeah. Yes. And in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so you are the choir master. That's the official term. And tell me a little bit about your congregation. Now, we have a church, and this is how I wanted it. And I think this is how God planted, where we welcome any and everybody. And so everyone is welcome. It doesn't matter creed, color ethnicity, socioeconomic bracket, alities, you know, alities, all right? Mm. Personality, sexuality, financiality, all of those. It doesn't matter. Why are you laughing? It doesn't matter. It reminded me of the bicentennial, B-U-Y. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. It, all of those things. And, you know, they wear what they want. And some of it is questionable, you know? And so when you embrace the world as we have, you get characters. This is a church full of characters. Would you say you're a character? No, no, no. I think I'm sort of sober-minded and I'm temperate and calm, you know, cool. You know, I'm sort of basic. I'm waiting for the lightning because I know it's coming. Yeah, I was waiting too. I was, I was like, I know I'm not right beside him, but you know, God can do miraculous things. Get Let me lightning. <laughs> But um, because I'm free spirit, I like that to be around me because honestly, no all jokes aside, I think we're created to be who we are. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have the right to tell other people who they are and what their personality is, how they express themselves and how they feel about their place in the universe. Only God can do that. So I don't try to indoctrinate people with dress like me, act like me. The only thing I say is, love like we should that's it that's it so you know i don't care what the hair looks like there was a girl in church suddenly with all pink hair all pink pink's in pink, I, i'm saying tell me something look and i was like don't you think i don't see you if they look like a pink pussy cat you know i started to make fun but i said that <laughs> <laughs> her name was deja and she was hiding from me i don't want the pastor to see my pink hair so i said i see you over there I see you with your pink looking like a pink pussy cat, but I don't care because if that's who you feel like being at that moment, who should say you shouldn't do that? And many churches are restricted. It's almost cult like. Mm. Ours is nothing like that. Nothing. I love that. Now tell me a little bit about uh, the youth ministry. And I know that Judea heads that up. Tell me well, a little bit about that. Judea has basically taken over my church. She thinks she's in charge. Is All she? The Yep, I let it be. All the young people follow her. They do all types of events. I mean, they do singing, they do music, they do spoken word, they do Bible study, they do fashion shows. I don't come for that because I can't manage to look at it. But you know, they do, they were doing red table talk before Jada. You know what I'm saying? They just called it table talk where they let it out and they invite me in. We want to hear what you have to say. I said, okay, so I'm coming. So the relationship a conference that she does, that's what she does. And all of the young people, the millennials and under, they via touch, they go to Judea. And all of the little children, Jordan is a musician. So he has all the little boys that want to play the drums and the girls that they do that. And my wife, I don't know, she's a cleanup. She's a cleanup maniac. She just likes to clean up. She spends every day with a broom in her hand. I don't know if she's sweeping or riding it. I'm not sure what she's doing, but she loves You did not, you did not. Hold oh, no, on one minute, Linda, is she around? She's not here, so it's okay. She didn't hear me. 
So I uh, looked you up a little bit. So you have been married for 31 years. I got married sometime 20 BC. Right. So what is the secret to successful long-term marriage? Keep one eye open and the other eye closed. At all times? And the answer, my gentleman, is yes, honey. You're right. Oh, she's coming in the door right now. The answer is yes. Unless she says, do I look bad in this? Make sure you say no, honey. Of course not. That's it? That's her. She just walked in the door. I got to go. I say, no, no. <laughs> they say, no, you're not coming over here. This, don't you have something to do? Yes. See? Hi. <laughs> She's allowed to say hello. Hello. No. She's the matriarch. <laughs> so our viewers are going to see all of this. All of this. All of this. And yeah, today's the day. It. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Today is the Thank day. You What's good about it is it's an African-American family. It's yes. all it's American family. And we're hardworking. And of course, it's faith-based. But it's really, I don't, you're not going to hear Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's not like that. We show it through, we exemplify it through how we love each other, how we love the community, how the church people love each other. That's how you really see God, not by screaming and condemning people. So you're not going to get so much of that. You're going to get some great music. Well, for me, I don't know. You can't speak for anyone else. Yeah, yeah. I can't speak for them. It's Patty Cowbell, Shaka Kent. Celine be gone and Diana lost. I can speak for them, I promise you. And it's not Aretha Franklin, it's more like Ben Franklin. I promise you, I can speak for them. So you're gonna see that funny. And then like there's people in my house now, it's, this is who we are, whether cameras are there or not. It's just about a family, children, parenting, I think is really relatable. Excellent. Now. I can't let you go without hearing a little bit of la, 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 la. Okay. La, 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 la. You just heard it. Well, no, not like that. I was just your warm up. No, I and, I did, no and Richard, I did. Richard, Richard. Hey, who's hey. here? Hey. Eugene, go to the piano. Judea, yeah. come here. Yeah. Stacy, come here. Let's do it. Come here. Play something, Eugene. Oh my, you know what? Like, oh. She wants us to sing. Daddy. Yeah. I mean, we can't talk about all these legends and you. What is that song you're playing? Don't play that. Play Brighter Day, Lovely Day, something like that. Jude doesn't sing with me. You know these people. <laughs> my son just walked by. He said, Fuck it. What's going on in this house? <laughs> When I wake up in the morning, love. Yes. Sunlight hurts my eyes. Come on, Janelle, get in there. Who's making me sing this song? <laughs> Before we say goodbye, sing. When then I, I look, look at, at you, you, and the world's all right with me. Come on, say Syria, put that wig on straight. Just, Just one, one look, look at, at you, and I know, I know it's gonna, gonna be. I know your head don't fit. But Daddy, a lovely day. 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 That's it. That's it. The rest you have to pay for tuning. That's it. <laughs> I just do you a fast concert, Linda. Got a living musician, living singers. You really it's like did. Soul Train at home. You did. It's fantastic. And that is what this was that. You guys, I'm so excited. Tonight, 10 30, 9 30 Central on USA Network. You are going to meet an amazing family. And I just want to tell you, I'm so excited. I'm excited all about all the episodes. I wanted to binge you guys. Please do. I will. Please do. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Bless you, Linda. And remember, we have to catch up because I got to make sure you're making dating process. Listen, Richard, I'm being serious right now. I, my mom has been praying for me. She's, she's like done. She's like, I prayed for you for the last like 10 years and you're the last, I'm the last of all of my siblings. Well, to it's it going to work. Prayer works, but we have to put that prayer in action. Oh. Goodbye, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>